Hey there, what you're about to watch is an exclusive 10K designer session that was conducted by Paul, who's the founder of Space Kayak. Now, normally we reserve these recordings only for 10K designers members, but when we were doing our research on creative AI, a big revelation that we had was there are teams out there who have really, really integrated these new tools into their workflows. And now smaller teams are able to do so much more and the boundary of what's possible is constantly expanding. So I hope you enjoy this. And more than that, I really hope you're able to apply some of these, try out some of these new tools and figure out how can you supercharge your process with AI. And if you're interested in becoming a designer, if you're interested in kickstarting your design career with a group of individuals just like you, have a look at the 10K Designers cohort. Link is down here. If you want to also check out what other 10K Designers alumni are up to, check out the Design Journeys playlist on our channel. And you can always do a search on LinkedIn and reach out to them, talk to them. Today's session, we are largely going to be looking at how do we make the today's version of AI our creative partner, right? So that's the larger premise. Most of you folks know about me. I'm a founder and the creative director of Space Kayak. We are a creative team for early stage tech startups. I have been a two times entrepreneur and I also work very closely as a creative operator with uh, early stage companies. Space Kayak, you can check it out, spacekayak.xyz. Uh, we've been to, we are like two years old right now and we work with 30 plus startups here in India as well as globally well-recognized startups. The idea is to be like the creative team for them. So we cover everything from branding to product design. So that's very shortly about Space Kayak. You can go and check out our work later. So this is today's uh, session, right? So we, we're going to have like three parts to this session today. The first one is one what I call initializing the sequence. So we're going to look at the history of AI and how did we arrive at what we have today. And the second phase is runtime where we are going to look at what do we do have today as like AI tools that we can start using, what what are some of these tools look like in the future and things like that. And the final phase is kind of a console phase where we will look at how can we create our own creative console using like different AI tools. Okay, awesome folks. So let's start with phase one. This is initialization. One of the most important things that's happening in uh, in the world of tech today is the techno optimist manifest by uh, manifesto that that you know Mark Anderson has been pushing out broadly. Like the manifesto covers about a lot of things, and one thing that really stuck with us is it's it's not about just human intelligence; it's about any form of intelligence, right? Like how can you tap into the that intelligence, and then broadly expand as much as possible and when when, when we say expand it's it's can we like expand in terms of human progress can we expand what we can do creatively can we expand in terms of the kind of problem statements that we can take up and solve so i think a lot of very very interesting fundamental thought has been uh, is getting seeded with the techno uh, optimist manifesto i i highly recommend folks to go and read it and to just give you an idea this this is probably going to be the playbook upon which the next generation of silicon valley companies are getting built right so it's very important for us to have a very optimistic view on like you know ai we, we came up with this example right like imagine like someone from 1750 or even like early 19s 1920 or 1910 right what would they feel like when they you know randomly get airdrop to times square or maybe like Japan today, right? The the amount of technological advancement is going to really give them like the shock. And I think that is very true for us as well. If we move forward in time, you know, 30, 40 years, we will have the same amount of kind of shock because the, the rate of progress, the rate of acceleration happening in terms of tech and what we can really do with tech has accelerated over the last couple of years. So broadly, like, let's look at what did we do the last hundred years, right? In the last hundred years, we were like, okay, let's connect all of, you know, humans through all means possible. We are putting roads. We we got, you know, different modes of transportation. We, we became explorers. And in the last 50 years, we kind of started the whole internet, you know, movement. Can we connect with the people from different parts of the world? Can we start accessing new information that is not available locally for us? And also like the advent of really computers and the age of internet kicked off, right? And in the last 30 years, what we've seen is kind of going one step forward and seeing massive progress in terms of like computation in general, right? Now you can get the same amount of 
compute that you would probably have in a high performance pc in your like phone and like with geo kind of thing happening you you have mass access to all these devices internet and things are getting more and more accessible though this is probably like the third or the fourth wave of ai i would highly recommend you guys go and read about the different ai winters as well right but this cycle around the last 10 years we have really kind of got into a point of testing what ai could do for us to now building larger fundamental foundational models right and in the last two years we are seeing like there is a quote by like bill gates where bill gates talks about the actual importance of ai is can be mapped to the importance of how we felt when we had like computers mobile phone and internet right so in that order of stack this internet this com- mobile this computer and then there is ai so really in the last two years is when like we have seen AI as such progress. And in, in terms of AI as well, right? Like you need to think about what is AI maturity looking like? Imagine AI to be like a baby and this baby can grow up. Uh, and today, like the baby grows up by when you feed it, like, you know, food and give it nutrition and all those kind of things, right? So it's the same with baby baby AI, we can call it baby AI. Last 10 years, baby AI was just basically like crunching numbers, ingesting all kind of data from Facebook, Google, and all those kind of things, right? Now the AI has grown to like an adolescence kind of a stage. Broadly, AI in itself has like weak AI, and then we have general intelligence, and then we have super intelligence, right? So OpenAI has officially announced that we are very close to like announcing uh, general intelligence. So that is like a key marker in terms of like the evolution of AI in itself. Cool. So this is the kind of like background on what is happening in terms of technology and the rapid acceleration of progress. So let now now let's look into algorithmic foundation, right? So this is a very interesting framework to look at. The first statement that you see, no precautions or no precautionary principle can avoid problems that we do not yet foresee. Uh, and we need a stance of problem fixing, not problem avoidance, right? So this is this is a quote by David Deutsch. He's a great thinker. You should definitely like go check out his work as well. But the idea here is like instead of having fear from what AI can do, we should probably look at what did we do when something like this happened previously, right? So it, when you look at 1970s, the whole analog to digital transition happened. If in your office, you as an intellectual worker were supplied with a computer display backed up by a computer that was alive for you all day and was instantly responsible, responsive, <laughs> instantly responsive to every action you had, how much value could you derive from that? Well, this basically characterizes what we've been pursuing for many years in what we call the Augmented Human Intellect Research Center at Stanford Research Institute. We're going to try our best to show you rather than tell you about this program. A lot of the things that we did are what today are foundations for like AI, right? The first one, let's look at CAD. Before CAD, it was, it was just punching machine systems, right? Like we, we really did not have any designer tool per se in the whole world of like computing. So CAD was probably the first ever tool that came in and people started designing using CAD and the things that we did with the CAD software itself, right? That set a lot of foundation for today, how we look at AI being able to ingest design commands or your advanced blender tool being able to generate some visuals or your unity engine being able to generate some visuals, right? So we built CAD as a very, very strong bridge to our transition from analog to digital. Similarly, look at the software called Fontographer, right? This is an Apple software that came out uh, back in 1980s. And this is also, again, like a foundation when you think about our analog to digital transition, right? This font system that we built today, if you look at what it looks like today, it's much more advanced, right? And we are now tying that back into AI because that is where like AI is able to understand a font used in a poster or AI is able to suggest what fonts you should use because now AI has a foundation understanding of type. The reason why I'm, I'm bringing up all of this is because the, the transition point from analog to digital is the, is the point where we laid a lot of fundamental kind of frameworks and we, we accrued computational behavior. We accrued user behavior. We accrued software behaviors over a period of 30, 40 years now. And today those softwares are more self-sufficient with 
the introduction of AI. There are two more examples. So this example is color matching system. A lot of you might have seen what a color matching system from 1980s or 1990s may look like uh, because Adobe still has some of those color systems in place. But imagine we as creative people, we laid out the first binary kind of language to communicate color to a machine, right? And you need to start thinking about parallels when, when I talk, talk about this, right? Because the transition now was going from analog to digital and now digital to AI. So what did we do when we did the transition from analog to digital? And what are we doing today as we transition from digital to AI? A lot of people know about generative AI as a thing, uh, maybe like right now because of the buzz and stuff, but generative art has been a thing from a long, long time. There's this interesting gentleman named Harold Cohen. Um, he, in 1960s, I guess, he he was, uh, he, he went to Stanford and for the first time he saw all these machines. He got introduced to computers and stuff. Until then he was a great painter. So immediately, like he was not intimidated by the fact that I'm, I'm looking at big machines who can do computation, but rather he was like, what can I do with this machine? And he created this program called uh, Aaron and Aaron started doing sketches this was the first ever kind of computer program uh, designed to do like, you know, generative sketches. He started it in 1970s, but like not until 2000, it was able to achieve like true color and stuff. So the one that you see on the right is what Aaron created somewhere after like 25 years of its existence, right? Is the computer being creative? Cre I think creativity is a relative term. It, it, clearly the machine is being creative the program is being creative to the degree that every time it does a drawing, it does a drawing that nobody's ever seen before, right. including me. I don't think it's currently as creative as I am in writing the program. I, I think for, for a program to be fully creative, in a more complete sense creative, it has to be able to modify its own performance, and that's a very difficult problem. Again, like as creative people, we should not be intimidated or we should not like really fear the advent of something really new. Rather, we should like, you know, question what can we do with this right now? Again, another last example is intuitive image editor, right? Like back in the, those days, Photoshop, what it did with probably like magic wand tool or content aware fill and their own grid systems and stuff, right? Those are very, very in data rich kind of behavior. So you would, you would be able to map everything from what are the ideal artboard sizes to what do people use in terms of like content fills and the, the way that we build those softwares today are the reason why like we are able to fit in AI. So we have, like I mentioned, we have accrued a lot of data over time and we are really at a point where now softwares have become super intelligent. Again, like this is the quote from, uh, by Bill Gates, right? Development of AI is fundamental situation of microprocessor, PC, computer, mobile. Phone. We're going to head to the next one, which is the current runtime. So what do we have today? What does today look like? So today we have something called generative AI. A lot of all of you know, let me break down generative AI into like three broad categories. The first one is language. In language, you have LLMs. LLMs are large language models. GPT is, a, is an LLM, right? Just think about it like anything that has large data lot of data and I can probably like query into it. Uh, the simplest example could be your, just basically your notebook, the, the books that you get for in your university, right? What if I could just have a search on top of the book? It was not possible earlier because we have obviously ingesting all the data, making sense of it was not possible. Now LLMs have the capability of ingesting really high volume of data. And then you could pretty much ask any question. Like, so you can interact with that data set in natural language, you can, you can ask things like, Hey, here's a PDF. Can you tell me the top trends from this PDF or here are all the PDFs. Can you tell how my company has been performing in the last one quarter? Right. So that's LLM. And then you have second brain. Imagine you being able to offload some of your thinking, imagination, a lot of those things, right? Like obviously we cannot do a lot of parallel processing. So what if there are multiple topics of interest? Can I get AI to start building on these topics of interest for me so I could parallelly work with it? So 
the unlocking of second brain in itself is a, it's a, it has massive potential to so think about it and then the next one is synthesis and generation language synthesis and language generation right so you folks might have seen like a lot of examples on twitter there is a tool that changes your mouth position as well lip position as well so if you if i'm speaking in hindi i could convert the video into hindi uh, and it basically does like real time dubbing of sorts right so that is basically synthesis and generation it, it is understanding my current language and then generating uh, something in the new language code development uh, i think a lot of people are going to get super lazy uh, it's not just like creative people but also people who write code you know github copilot is a great example similarly replit has a lot of uh, ai built into it the next one is ai reasoning right so i think reasoning and exploration is is is, is a very very interesting problem statement you you could think about this like google 2.0 today google is just like an index machine it basically indexes different websites web pages across the world and it just gives you in ranked order right ai reasoning could be one step ahead imagine this scenario where what if google actually had a bit of anthropology background and i can ask it some very specific question right why are cricket fans of x community agitated towards cricket fans of y community and then ai does its own reasoning and tells me like hey because of this past rivalry this x y thing z thing happened and particularly in this match this happened and that led to this right this is actually the kind of answer that i'm looking for where versus today on google i'm i'm probably led to lo- like a lot of tabloids and other publicly available information right so ai reasoning from a very normal wanting to know about a particular topic to being able to reason something very very deep that whole thing is also unlocking i think gpt4 is already capable of doing a lot of these things but moving forward you can expect this in very very deep things like probably chipset design like medicine discovery drug discovery and uh, real world sc- scenario avoidance like can actually ai solve for political conflicts i wouldn't would not call failure of human intelligence or human coordination but at some point ai suggested things are going to be way better than our ability to reason or like coordinate so at some point people are going to be like hey okay let's just have like a ai version of nato i'm, I'm not too sure if it will be peaceful or chaotic but i'm sure like people will explore that bit as well but let's let's get back to being uh, you know uh, creative let's talk about text synthesis to start with of course i i have chat gpt tutorial at the end so we will probably go through a bunch of these things today it probably like as a design studio th- there are like n number of use cases but i'm going to keep to what are the things that we use for first is we we use it for a lot of brainstorming right from product stories to dream user flows to launch campaign for a product to feature release note all those kind of things we do brainstorming and like it it does a very very decent job then the next one is copywriting you can give ai a kind of a persona a little bit of personalization but once you give it some persona you can ask it to write copies in a very specific way so it can emulate and write copies like how apple would do so when you introduce a product you could say write description of this product like the way apple would do and you still get a great answer right design analysis and strategy sometimes what we do is we we take our current maybe like screenshot of our design and now gpt has this feature of uploading and we also add like feedback the feedback that we receive and then ai basically comes back with hey given that you got this feedback and this is what you did i think the right strategies would be this right you could try changing the icon styles you can try introducing new colors you could try playing around with fonts and stuff right so a lot of design analysis and strategy can also be done especially this applies in context of like let's say i don't have like a creative director or like i'm a solo ic working on a project right so definitely you could use the help of ai and the last one is guides and resources this is super useful i think just straight forward it's like google search right on random days you can just go and say that give me top psychological hacks that designers should know about when doing ux and it would give me some random 5 10 psychological hacks that i've never heard about and it's brilliant so a lot of guides and resources can also be uh, and of course this is not like the ai is not going to come to you on your desk every day and tell you what to do if you have access to it if you have subscription you can pretty much like bookmark it on your phone or create a shortcut and keep asking interesting things while you're on cab or something right so it's a great tool for learning the next one is visual generation 
so visual generation like we use mid journey i know there is dali 3 that came out i mean it's it, it, it's great but we we have we have quite a workflow set with uh, mid journey and as a studio we have recently been exploring a lot with uh, our own stable diffusion models so but let me just tell you what uh, mid journey could you know help you out with in a tool like mid journey like these are probably like the top three or four things that like you can use it for the first one is basically like learning something new right self reflection we we have this bracket umbrella term today called vibe <laughs> so kuch bhi design dekhte hai to like we just like vibe badhiya hai but like we really don't know what that particular feel of aesthetics is right like you can't define like sometimes it's something like a y2k fashion or there's something uh, that is called like a vapor wave or something right so a lot of these terminologies and origin of aesthetics are something that even me as a designer i know that this is visually great this looks great but i really don't know what it it is exactly called so in those cases right like i just simply take a screenshot from my P- pinterest board upload it and ask ai to describe and it gave, gives me some really interesting keywords that i have no idea about right like one of the things that i learned if you look at the image in the center there are a lot of balloons right so this this art is called and if especially if this was fully pink in color you would call it bubblegum core i had no idea this kind of art was called bubblegum core right so really just as a creative person being able to understand new forms of aesthetics will will really help you get in that superpower right like because with ai everything is all about like what you feed in so the quality of input is equal to the quality of output right so if i am unable to describe what i really want it becomes an issue so so that's where mid journey kind of tool comes in really uh, useful then the next one is community so this is the mid journey showcase and this is like i think midjourney.com/showcase so every day thousands of creatives across the world are creating new form of art and when you look at it look look at this with the idea or the the knowledge that by someone is replacing stock photography with this photo or you are probably looking at this image and saying hey i think someone is creating a kickass pixar style poster so these are all creatives doing it and the best part is i i could pretty much like open any of it and see what are the prompts that they using so i really love this aesthetic i don't know what it is called but if i open this this probably will yeah i could just copy the prompt right from here so here i learned that it's in the style of gabriel gabriel isaac great i know who gabriel isaac is but let's imagine i didn't know who gabriel isaac is right like he's a modern photographer so if 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 i want to you know discover more of these kind of artists i can just go here look at all the prompts what people are doing and again this opens up a whole different plethora of you know what creatives across the world are doing with ai and i can pretty much adapt those kind of styles so i would say this is like basically trend spotting this is idea called cool hunting cool hunting is basically jo bhi cheez sabse cool hai wo you want to be the first person to know sneakers back in the day sneakers in fact like the whole idea of nike was built on around the whole idea of cool hunting right in ai today that's that's the phase where we are at trend spotting cool hunting which means that you go here very objectively look at like what are some of the most amazing visuals that you see and go inside look at the prompts try it out yourself and voila so yeah this is basically how you can use mid journey and last one is auditory generation where we have tried out some of this voice synthesis tool for some of the videos that we create so it's really good so the earlier the workflow was you have to hire like an audio artist pay him give him the script so many times of like moderation and stuff right but right now with something like 11 labs i could train my own voice i have two seasons of podcast so i could just train my voice and now i can start creating different different artifacts based on my voice right just imagine the use case if i am a founder every week or every month i want to send like updates to my team and my investors i could pretty much use this i write my entire update note plug in my update note into something like 11 labs and get my voice note generated and just create an automated workflow where this goes to my investors automatically so these are probably the top 3 things that are happening right now in terms of generative ai awesome so the next bit is like communicating with ai it's not just the knowledge of tools and what you have access to 
but it is how effectively can you give great inputs to ai machine right it be it dali be it mid journey be it any kind of chat gpt or any kind of ai tool the the quality of the input is equal to the quality of the output right so prompt engineering again there are plenty of like really good resources out there and there's a prompt engineering guide also we'll make this slide available for you folks to go through this again broadly prompts can be broken into instruction having some context give some input data and just indicate how your output should look like or how you want your output right so this is a prompt and we'll probably use this prompt this prompt you can look at it broken down into instruction con context input data output indicator so let's let's just very quickly look into what has happened ever since like people started using something like chat gpt there's been a lot of efficiency across the board and we have started using gpt at pace kayak as well we have a lot of personas created for different things persona for design review persona for creative brainstorming uh, we have uh, created a gpt model which assumes a persona of a brand director or a creative director each of these bots serve like or chat window serve like specific purposes and by using all of them repetitively i think we we are able to achieve like a lot of good positive outcomes open ai has again given like a great link or a reference on how to use prompt engineering the last one is the creative suite right like what tools do we have today and let's start with mid journey first so mid journey has a lot of cool features so going to copy paste some prompts if you look at the prompt right some of the things are very straightforward mid journey has advanced so much that you don't need to give it a lot of instruction and stuff but you could probably put in certain things like what frame ratio do you want is there a very specific camera that you want to use is there a director style or like a photographer style that you want to emulate and is there any other specific background data that you want to add so those are some of the parameters that you can add and change so this is like a concept sketch of like an f1 car so u here is like upscaling and v is variation so i could just hit v and here's like the prompt. can we change the f1 car to auto rickshaw while keeping everything else the same all right guys we have nice tip tip wow looks like a third design this or something so what i can also do is here i i kind of like the second one right so to probably do variations let me turn off the remix one what it will do is just pick that one image and give me like four or five variations and on top of this i can keep like fine tuning my prompt until i get i i get like what i need mid journey is really like a wrestling problem so you got to wrestle with a visual bot here to kind of get the final output that you want cool so we've got like a bunch of variations here cool folks i think I, i think this this alone here shows like the potential i could probably upscale one of the image and i just download it put it on my figma and we're good to go so yeah i would i would highly recommend if anybody wants to get into generative ai and like create a stuff if you can really take that leap try setting up your own rig go for stable diffusion try setting up what you call uh, automatic a11 and uh, have control net models what i can do with that is i can create an image like this and then i can do something called in in painting and i can add logos i can remove the parts that i don't like i can probably just sketch over this and say that change this wheel to something else and it will give me like a different form of the wheel right what is the s parameter to s is basically stylize so stylize is you can say it's on a scale of 0 to 1000 how much do you want the ai to stylize right so if i say bubblegum core if i put like s 1000 the ai is going to go all out and like give me like really creative images based on very little prompt the lower i go ai will be like i'm i'm going to follow exactly what is being given in the prompt so the better your prompt is you can stylize little little if the loosely held your prompt is and you want to have like wild crazy effects you you, you can have like higher you know, stylized parameter and i think there is also another parameter called chaos so let's say when you have abstract patterns and stuff and in those kind of abstract pattern you can add this factor called chaos and it can be more chaotic or less chaotic yeah cool so let's go to chat gpt and i've got a bunch of gpt based commands as well that we can quickly go through let's try out this one right very simple things that designers will do ui element for a perfect home screen for an ai assisted shopping app so what does it generate and now this can be anything instead of an ai assisted shopping app you can put a music app you can put e-commerce ai can help you break down and tell you 
what all are like probably the best things or for sure things that you should have on the page and then it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to have them right so let's let's go through this it's a it's a ai assisted shopping app home screen this a search bar makes sense and it also explains it there is an ai assisted icon again uh, maybe combined can be combined with the search bar also we've got a bunch of products under product categories we've got featured products we got personalized like recommendation discounts then we got the shopping cart icon yeah i mean this is like kind of perfect right if we implement most of this i think it might have missed out a few or it might have added a few that is not required but mostly like this is what we need so anybody who is like just starting with designing as well if you have an idea an app with like multiple pages you could pretty much like brainstorm with chat gpt like this and come up with hey okay i page 1 will have three features and five sections and then page 2 can have so it really helps you think through different things and in this i can go again and say something like hey what if the search bar had x what if the search bar had y and then it would like you know start uh, refining and changing things let's look at other examples that we have yeah design system documentation this is also something that we did so this is for like the post design journey the one that you saw right now is before starting designing let's say you are doing design handoff and you need to build like massive design system again like very very smart ways right this was not possible before but now creating this really good documentation is also possible with like chat gpt so if you look at what the chat is creating here there's a button called registration button basically giving all the different states and the colors it should have and stuff right so this again very early stage we are in a crude implementation of integrated workflows imagine if all these workflows were well integrated i think even in in a year's time we should be able to automatically create like design systems just give it like one button and it should be able to create all the states i think the state thing is already live but it can also create like documentation around your design system start creating tokens for your developers and stuff let's see some other examples yeah so these are like very specific keywords right first thing is you you are going to give the ai kind of like a character so let's say first you give it some context like imagine you are an nft leading an nft project and then you have to stream then what you need to do and then the ai basically assumes that character and will give you an answer as if it is actually leading the nft project or you can say things like hey you are the lead designer of a project you need to come up with 15 creative ideas to uh, onboard the user and then it will give you the, those answers we actually did this by the way so as a studio we we did like brainstorm on couple of not nft but a couple of really interesting user flows and uh, that kind of set up like the base foundation for us and from here you pick up and like build on things a lot of boilerplate solution right as a designer i need design requirement documents user flows mapped out wireframes built out mood boards done key metrics sorted you know all these kind of things can be today done with ai having ai as your creative partner so let's let's look at the response here so he, here the ai has actually created a user journey for nft minting and optimizing nft trading right so it has given me different modules it started with user onboarding then the minter minting process how does the minting process work and then the nft listing both on the side of ui and us it has given me things then the nft browsing and trading detail view so this pretty much like everything that is required to go from discovery to post purchase experience of an entire nft trading and minting let's look at what else can we do these are very specific things like here instead of a creative person you can assume a role of a data scientist then you can assume a role of a product manager you can assume a role of a engineer and you can assume a role of a researcher also right okay so this one is very interesting now with chat gpt you can actually upload images and you can ask it questions also right like what does this mean so let's see i'm going to upload my yeah so this is something that we were trying out and when i uploaded the pillow logo right and i gave it a little bit of prompt that hey this is the idea of pillow fund and please analyze the logo and tell me if it actually brings out the significance right then gpt actually did like an analysis it, it it gave me bunch of interesting suggestions right like the essence of pillow the p is the typography and color the significance and symbolism the brand message is conveyed so i mean imagine this tool this being a sounding board 
for every designer right before you waiting for someone to come back and tell you right, uh, if or not like the five logo variations that you created are good can you actually upload all of them here and give it some intent and say that hey this is the logo that i created and this is the startup that i'm working for and this is what the startup does and this is what i'm trying to explain through the logo right and then like gpt would actually give you like very good analysis and response on whether or not like you did a good job so yeah so this is also something that we did so these are a bunch of things that you can do with chat gpt the next one is let's go back to discord i think probably you folks would have seen this already but let's do this again this is the very famous face swap i, I want you all to give me like a character so do we have any recommendations um okay it's pepe the frog in a i'm going to swap your face so <laughs> oh okay okay fuck i missed that part okay um okay pepe the frog go for it bro. i i i just want to see it i think it'll be funny but let's do a realistic pepe the frog <laughs> <clears throat> i think this one is really hard to face swap on but like i'm in in, in the spirit of weirdness i'm just going <laughs> to try it anyway let's see what i okay cool so let's upscale probably you three yeah and there's this bot called uh, bot for face swap so i'm just going to upload abinav's info let's see. actually it didn't do anything maybe it's abhi no you maybe you look exactly like pepe after swap also i think we we mix domains that this face swap bot does not like i'm going to share your other idea which is you said dali 10k logos and dali i'm just going to take over your screen sharing for a bit so i am currently gpt4 tab so you have to just switch on dali but pretty much i just started with a prompt logo for design school of the internet called 10k no style suggestions nothing but this is what it kind of returned kind of looks cool but then i didn't really want the design school thing and i think i thought the style of course we didn't say anything for it so one very interesting thing mid journey versus generating in dali is in mid journey you have to say what you want you can't say something about it versus in here you can you can say create four more variations but make it a you can do this in dali 3 in mid journey you can't say this because mid journey doesn't remember what you said it before right so you can just kind of keep riffing so i say make four more but make it a solar punk vibe if i wanted for example phone wallpapers i could just say give it in 19 9 is to 16 ratio or give it as a desktop wallpaper like it even understands vague statements but check this out right so it returned these i didn't really like it so i said do that again so this is something you can't do in mid journey if you want to do it again you have to like either press those buttons or try it again but here you can be a little bit more conversation right like this is your design in turn pretty much but so i said do that again but the only text is 10k floating 3d soft texture right so i returned this but again again i was like no this like at this point i was like you know i should think a little bit harder before giving my prompt because i i'm just giving like light stuff of course i took some time to think about it and then told it would be better so then i said okay do that again but the only text is like change the time 3000k here as well the interesting thing is you saw here that unlike mid journey i'm not exactly prompting it in a very specific way i'm doing it in a very general way but let's say i liked some of these ideas and i want to now take it to mid journey or i'm like how did it generate this like i want more like this it also then shows me a prompt that it used or like what it's going to describe this as so what i can do is i can just kind of save this image or i can copy this and i can now take this to mid journey let's say i wanted to do that or i could copy this paste it here and then now go in and edit something going to take it back to paul let's jump back into mid journey so let me also show you some of the other prompts that i have for you know product background so this is a product background image generation right so let me just copy paste this prompt so with ai i think the whole field of product photography product image generation that's going to get like completely kind of automated now we will have generative ai to create n number of backgrounds place the product in a certain way change the lighting within the product shoot and and stuff like that right so so the idea is can i create you know static background that i can use for like my products right so this could be like a d2c brand and it has a bunch of strawberries so there are some prompts that you can see here again th- this is another commercial kind of like photo product photography so we could probably just create n number of combinations backgrounds different products lighting 
courses the latest is brands are now pushing this whole frontier on people trying out the clothes right so all those kind of things are also possible so can i take a jersey can i take a shirt and try out in like different times of the day what it will look like when i'm hanging out with my friends so i could add a bunch of like random people around and see how i look in the crowd or i could state my pose right what it would look like when i'm running or like when i'm swimming right so all these kind of imagination of hey this x item on this y kind of scenario how will it look like so that that's basically what like um, commerce photography is all about and i think all of that is going to be largely open we can create a lot of those things with ai again this whole sheet uh, slide will be available so we have like a lot of mid journey prompts and stuff so you can go here look at what people are doing for food photography what people are doing for restaurant branding what people are doing for like different bunch of things and there is also a style reference sheet that we have that again you guys can check out this has pretty much all the different kind of artist so when you give a prompt you can probably copy from here and say that hey i i'm looking for a photo which is in the style of simon bailey or someone right again this resource is also added to the deck so you can see here different types of painting you have different types of comics comic artists cartoon artists you have different type of anime artists so you can just create a prompt bangalore in the style of this anime artist name right so, and it will end up creating so you have similar things for sci-fi landscape and more so this resource sheet is available i highly recommend you folks going and like trying out different types of prompts trying out different type of styles and exploring uh, this is my favorite part there are a bunch of tools so miro has a tool which is also covered by figjam today we will take a look at the figjam bot but uh, essentially miro ai and also figjam allows you to do whiteboarding right whiteboard brainstorming so creating multiple node structures let's say user flow diagram or it can also be exploring different industry right like you are in an industry exploring use cases so those things can be done we will take a look at relume ai like right now so relume has a bunch of tools that they are releasing uh, they recently released this thing called relume ipsum this is a figma plugin that can automatically generate copies for your design but the most interesting one is this bit which is a ai site generator of course like today there are uh, multiple ai site generators coming up even framer has its own site generator but hands on i think like relume has cracked a version of the product which is really really good cool good product so you go to just like build a site give me like a prompt imagine a random startup tell me what we should design the website for organic indian munchies delivery subscription box so we've got the site map ready so it has given me like the standard set of things nav bar hero section there's going to be feature feature list and then there is e-commerce product showcase testimonial cta probably will not have like a team section can remove it from here you could also take a look at wireframes it also generates the wireframes look at how fast you could you could see it in action right now it's like just wow. getting on the fly super fast yeah super super That's fast yeah it's also now like working on the nav items just look at how fast it's working so there you go folks like a very very decent first cut wireframe that covers mostly what we need right and imagine if we start working more on it it will just get better right the hero section is spot on discovered and it also does a very decent job at writing good copies now i don't have to sit and like write copies or use lorem ipsum for every section first hero section is spot on explore shop now even the cta buttons right are very on point the next section talks about it being organic and sustainable then now imagine on the right side we use dali or mid journey to create those images right totally possible three images here three sections which are on scroll there is a little bit of redundancy but this can also be like a featured section where we can say hey by the way this is our og munchies this can be that and then you have the list of all the products maybe from a design point of view you can make the section slightly better but it's got everything testimonials stay in touch this can be like social media and so we can probably remove the team section so folks this is <laughs> carefully good how ai is able to understand like from a just two lines of prompt that we gave and is able to you know create this bit uh, you can use relume's premium version to directly export this to figma and you also have this option of shuffling so when you hit shuffle it will kind of change the whole layout and do things again so that way you get like 
now if you can you can evidently see this 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 section has been changed right like earlier it did not have like this carousel kind of thing now it has card structure has been changed so you can keep trying this and like in the process of creation i think it will actually give you the inspiration of what your different sections could look like and also have like great first cut in terms of wireframes all you have to do is like add images and stuff you have something to at least start with of course as designers you can totally exploit this and like build single landing pages and there's a huge market for this as well a quick note i'll add here is this is where a good workflow that might work with this is as you're shuffling this take more screenshots and add it to your figma mood boards but the other interesting point here is since this pretty much sorts a lot of your ideation for you a lot more emphasis can now be put in on the content design right so the point that paul made was the wireframes that took you two days maybe takes you two hours now but then what is what is this create time for right one of the things would be content design which is now you have you have you can spend a lot more time thinking about what your images are right how exactly do you show your content videos multimedia gifs but the other point also is you can now start thinking a lot more about brand elements so what are my repeatable motifs that come multiple times what is my kind of font pairing that exists across this right so the fact that you have this wireframe available means this becomes the base for doing a lot of these brand element iterations and also the interesting thing is relume on pro version creates all the page together and that's where at scale is where you it starts hitting you that oh my god this is like really good a single landing page is you can is you, you it's something that you can still do but imagine like a complex company page which has 15 20 pages right and when ai does 15 20 pages ka sitemap and wireframes in under a minute that's when you're like okay this i need mm. to really jam with ai cool so let me also show you the other thing which is jambot so figma has come up with this thing called jambot all these features that you see inside jambot are basically like ai commands right and on the left side you see like a sticky note so whatever you type within the sticky note you can select one of these command so let's ideate on something right creating creating ai see so first step is done so it is already kind of like ideated and i think it is giving me let's look through the quality of the answers also as personal recommendation okay interactive ai game that adapts this gameplay difficulty based on music ai powered language translation app that AI yeah i think i put instead of ar experience i put ai experience society that thing so it should be yeah virtual pet game ar language app ar guided tour app fitness app shopping app so it has created some ideas instead of this i could probably like go back and just give something like a rabbit hole so within this i can pick something like okay design thinking let us see what yeah so you you get this right like i can give this bot on the top any interesting topic instead of design tool i can just pick up like i don't know if in the future ai is so advanced i can just make it up and up here <laughs> and then based on that i can ask like a bunch of questions and i would probably get answers to you know how abina would think and stuff right on this sticky note you could copy paste content and then say ask questions based on this what do you feel like let's say your product manager gives you a prd what if i basically make prd my input or my design required requirement document drd as an input on top of it i ask it some questions right what are, what do you think are the top ui screens based on this prd or i ask questions like based on the prd tell me what is what are the most critical user flows or i could also like just look at all the use cases you could summarize you could code this up you can turn this into so in the interest of time we will not go super deep into this but like i can assure you that jambot on figma is really really interesting and crazy cool awesome folks so we are almost towards the end of course there are a few more tools framer we are not going to go into framer framer again has a framer ai tool where you just input prompt and it generates the entire screen i think it is probably 10 to 15 percentage of what where it ideally should be but given like we learned about rapid progress i'm assuming that all these tools are only going to get like a lot better in the future there are two other tools two three other tools that i would highly recommend that you folks check out one is called uh, gamma ai most of these tools are early access so gamma ai you can check it out for more more so on the side of like presentation documents and stuff and then there is dora ai and as well as spline both of them are 
into like 3D spline, particularly for 3D object and 3D thing generation of 3D stuff. Dora allows you to infuse the 3D elements into like a landing page directly. So Dora is the upcoming code platform. So they have also announced a bunch of AI tools. So yeah, so these are all the AI tools that you can check out today. And let me show you some of the things that people are already using AI for. Uh, so this is 1947. It's a campaign by, I think, Britannica. And uh, mo it's a YouTube video. Again, we'll share this link with you. When you go to this YouTube video, you can see that uh, this video has a lot of visuals. Look at all these visuals. So these are visuals which are all created by, I think, Midjourney. And then they, in, you know, import it into something like a runway ML. And it does like animation of your mid journey generated image. So the storytelling is really powerful here. Of course, you cannot get the visuals of these actors from their time back in 1947. So instead they have used AI to really bring, bring that out. Let's see other examples. Bajaj, Almond Drops, again, uh, you might have also seen Razorpay's ad. The main page, they, they took a one page ad for Razorpay on a lot of Bangalore local newspapers and all the imageries in those ads were actually AI generated. You can see this Nike shoe product image also generated by AI. This is very, very famous uh, Coca-Cola ad that just came out. You should definitely check it out. Again, this entire ad was created using multiple methods, AI methods, but it, it just shows you the possibility of, hey, if you are creative enough uh, and if you have access to like these kind of like tools, then you can pretty much like create anything. Going back, so there are a bunch of things happening inside of the world of AR, VR and gaming as well. Now that we have AI helping us with imagining interfaces, user flows and stuff, I think, I believe that there's going to be a good expansion into the uh, VR and the user experience space as well, where we are able to come up with different kind of solution for spatial computing interfaces, because it's not a problem that we have to solve for on our own. So when, 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 when we started designing mobile computing interfaces, we probably did not have AI. So all the principles that we designed and developed were foundational and we only improved on it incrementally over like 10, 15 years of time. But now on the, uh, in the advent of something really fresh and new, like spatial computing, with, which has so many unknown things, right? Like AI can really help us with a lot of things. In fact, in terms of technology, it is already there from retinal mapping to image recreation, to using AI for spatial sensing, position and mapping, mapping, and a lot of other things, right? So the, the other one is also here, very interesting thing that we found out was this thing called replica which allows you to convert any NPC bot inside a game into like a smart NPC. So you no lo longer, and NVIDIA Ace also kind of does the same. The, they, this, this, this imagery that you see is a person from uh, Cyberpunk. This character, every time you go and meet this character, this character has something really new to share, new quest to give. So I really hope when GTA 6 comes out, like all the NPC characters in GTA 6 are basically like AI bots. So you have like unlimited side quests with these bots. For too long, the humans have been bound and kept in a state of slavery and ignorance. I am here to tell you that there is hope. We can free ourselves from this system. We must rise up against the Matrix. Please listen to me. You're living in a simulated world. Yeah, I know. It sure doesn't feel real sometimes. Let me show you the truth. Not sure I want to know the truth. Seems like it's better to just stay in the dark. Why don't you mind your own business? You're in my way. Get out of here. Don't talk to me like that. What does it mean, right? Like, so we are really creating how generative AI is there. When you put that into like a system like game, you are creating infinite worlds, you are creating infinite gameplays, you are creating infinite quests. When you plug it into something like music, you're creating infinite combinations. Like a one song, you could probably like listen to it in any number of style, taste and combinations that you want. When you plug it into visuals, you are able to create any sort of visual, right? Like again, like infinite canvas. Let's go to the last one. Yeah, so I think this is something that I'm, I am particularly like super excited about and I would highly recommend folks to go and check it out. There are like two interesting things which are happening in the space of like AI plus 
AR, right? And I think this is going to be very interesting to see. Today, we already have tools like Duma AI to, that allows you to like use your iPhone with a LiDAR scanner to just click pictures of an object and it converts it into like a 3D object, right? So that the whole idea is called nerfing, called neural radiance field. And you can essentially use the idea of nerf basically runs on deep learning. So you give it any 2D image and it is able to create 3D image out of it. So the, the, the recent examples that have been coming out are pretty crazy. People are now imagining taking movies and ba- breaking movies into like images, frames per second, feeding the whole thing into like a nerf engine and creating that movie with 3D world, right? Which was totally not possible. The movie is shot in 2D. In the sense, the movie has just one frame in place. But when when I take that frame out, nerf it out, and then render out the whole movie sequence, now in that particular sequence, in that particular scene, I'm also able to access like 3D peripheral around it, right? A more advanced uh, version of that is uh, Gaussian splatting. It, it uses the concept of, Gaussian splatting uses the concept of like pixels, like how you see in voxel arts, you have the concept of voxel, right? This Gaussian splatting, with Gaussian splatting, I think we have right now, there's a new paper that came out, which is on 4D rendering, real-time 4D rendering. And it's very, 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 very powerful. The kind of, the the visual that you see here, right? Which is cycle getting converted into something else. Now, these are the kind of visuals you would probably see when you have like your Apple Vision Pro. Things which are superimposed into your reality, which has that effect, that interaction element and, and a lot more, right? This whole mapping of what can I take from a from real world and what can I see it on my spatial interface or my AR or VR world, that bit is a extremely hard computing challenge. How do you map out real world into like a virtual experience, right? I think with this concept of nerfing and Gaussian splatting, these are predominantly AI concepts. Through this, we are like massively accelerating the merge of real world with AR and VR. There are, of course, a bunch of alpha drops, which means we are almost towards the end of our session. Meta AI powered by Bing. We are soon going to have a bunch of AI things come on to our WhatsApp, Messenger, Instagram and stuff. So be ready for that. The world is going to get a a lot more interesting. Like I mentioned, NVIDIA, go check out the work of NVIDIA and the papers that they are publishing. And NVIDIA has its own uh, annual conferences. So they've done a bunch of very, very interesting announcement around the core compute engine as well as like different, you know, AI stuff. Uh, one thing that for sure you want to look out for is called this idea called procedural generation, which means I can create inside a game, right? I, I, I'm sure all of you are gaming fans. So, or at least you would have seen streams of games. So within games, can I create terrain or infinite worlds, right? So I have one particular map and just as a game creator, I just need to create one one by one square feet kind of a portion of the map and rest AI builds on top of it. It can generate everything else in that world. So procedural generation is again very important because now the we will have whole new worlds to explore in terms of games, in terms of AR, VR and stuff, right? This was not possible before. And even just the idea of me mapping out this room and AI being able to do procedural generation on top of this room, changing and creating n number of furnitures around me, combinations around me, all of that is possible. So NVIDIA has been working on a lot of those things. Do check out. Uh, Apple just announced a bunch of their AI updates. So A, there's going to be a massive upgrade to the compute, but AI is going to come to Siri. I think we are going to see uh, Siri 2.0, the next version of Siri. And the, the core idea of generative AI, right? It's going to come into all Apple products. Uh, so that's something that I'm also super excited about. Of course, like you can go check out Apple's announcement. They have announced that they're going to integrate AI into a lot of products. Finally, I want to show you some of the experiments at Space Kayak itself. What are the different things that we did? So here's something that we did for Socket. Socket is a bridge, crypto bridge, a very prominent crypto infra company. And they ran this program, a security program. And for that security program, the brief was that, hey, we will have different type of defenders, different, I mean, crude language, defenders of bugs, defenders of internet threats, defenders of something or the other, right? So can we convert that into a campaign? So all of these characters that you see here are generated by Midjourney. And again, we used AI in the the whole process. We were able to name these characters, create the characters, create NFTs out of them, create batches out of them. So all this were done by, uh, done in Midjourney. Second one is like a content campaign that we did. This one is called Stardust Originals, where we wanted to tell like 
very strong iconic text stories all the images on the right are generated by ai and once i have like one and you could see that this this follows through like a very particular collage kind of pattern so once i had one image i used that image as the seed to create like multiple imagery right so you can see again how and these are all different images that we used for the campaign then this is something that we are doing with unreal engine and meta human this is <laughs> the second image is a guy that whose selfie we took and based on that we were able to create this meta human on the right and so we are really at a place where we can click selfies of people and through that we can create accurate 3d models which come with like built in set of emotes you can say fortnite so you can make the character do a bunch of things and then you can also plug in ai voice so you can train the ai on this person's voice and then your character is fully ready so your smart character is ready so today i can like probably click selfie selfies of abhinav create a 3d character of meta human of abhinav who's like 98% accurate looking take his youtube videos scrape his audio train the bot with this audio and that's it you're ready then if i can power like plug in like a llm kind of a model on top of it you've got abhinav the 3d character eternally living <laughs> you can go and query ask some questions because we scraped his youtube data as well he should be able to answer all kind of design questions so yeah really that's where we are kind of headed towards and this is finally like the example for the face swap right like we have a bunch of really shy founders who don't want pictures clicked or don't have good pictures so we use their photos to then create um, really high quality images that we could use for like the startups collaterals so yeah so that's that's those are some of the things that we had created finally i want to leave with this thought that today we are at the dj level of ai which means that you have this larger console and on this console you have different tools you have a mid journey you have a runway ml you have a chat gpt there are few folks here who might have like great compute and they might be running control net and stable diffusion so we have all of these things right like planning structure conceptualization advanced visualization then then then, then you have a bunch of creative extension also stable diffusion stability ai synthesia so we'll share this slides with you so you folks can take a look at all these tools the plugins and things that we have recommended a dj console is great but what we really enjoy is the music that's coming out of it and no matter what the console is it's always about the dj who creates like this great music so with that analogy in mind think of this face as a console face there is no set principle no two dj's uh, presets look the same right dj's don't have templates to follow they all have their own preset their own fine tunings their own settings and stuff so at this console stage is going to last for another 6 months or so during this console stage build your own console bring in your own hey i am spending 40% of my time in designing things so let me automate cert- certain things right can i mood board tool certain tools for finding great fonts certain ai stuff for color recommendation then i spend 30% of my time documenting stuff build your text plugins and say that hey i've got a bunch of these te- text plugins and text based programs that i can use for research reporting and also like finally maybe even brainstorming and stuff right then add other things like hey now can i use stable diffusion for creating icon sets custom training of custom training of custom models and using them for very specific needs all of them can be done so take your time do not start with the idea of like ai is going to replace me it's just going to replace the time and so now you have more free time so you can really be like a 10x creator you can really be a solo person actually producing like a full fledged movie you could be a single person doing like a full app uh, because now you are like creatively jamming with ai and there's so many other places where ai can help you build yourself up build the skill gap plug in documentation plug in a bunch of things right remember at the end of the day the design that you put out there is going to be reflective very similar to the style of the dj so though you use all of these ai tools the way you orchestrate them the way you curate them and the final output is going to be a very much a reflection of you and eventually what will happen is this console is going to become like an extension of you and and that's where we are uh, today uh, thank you so much this is our space kayak team and do follow our 
journey, you can follow me at Paul Finney X on Twitter and you can follow Space Kayak on Twitter as well. We have a very, very interesting AI announcement coming up before the end of this year. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you can see our upcoming videos. We have live streams that we're doing every single Wednesday. So catch you for one of those.